All right. Yeah, we got we got a few people. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Do you want to introduce me? Maybe that's fun. Let's see where this. Oh goes. no! No 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 no! You're introducing yourself. Then you introduce me first. <laughs> For pride of Hub Alaska, Kami Augustine hails. <laughs> So, We're not doing this. So He's introducing I'm, himself. I'm, I'm Eric Peterson. I'm out of the At Siegel office, uh, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I run a, a kind of a small family style team. It's myself, three additional agents. Uh, I see Jenny Summerlots online. She, uh, I have the pleasure of working with Jenny, um, uh, Paul Schultz, and Alyssa Zajac. And uh, we also have a listing manager transaction coordinator, um, Erica Blazek, who's actually, she's an agent out of the Coon Rapids office, actually, and runs a, a separate company as well. And then uh, we also have a, a kind of a part-time marketing uh, person as well. So last year we did 102 deals, uh, like 36 and a half million for 1.15 in GCI. So. Um, so you're kind of a big deal. Yeah. A little bit. No, but um, but I've been selling since 2006, and so uh, when people ask me when I got into real estate. I always say right as the piano was being pushed off the top of the building, because that really was, that was the time. like when everything just kind of like, and, you know, yeah. looking back, I think there's so much. Were you a solo agent then? or were you? On I was, yeah. So I actually started a real estate auction company um, and we did uh, a bunch of land auctions and stuff like that. I, let's take this back. So um, I live in, I, I live in Howard Lake. I uh, grew up in Waverly. So straight west where 394 turns into 12 just keep going uh for pack a lunch and you're pack there a lunch come for the scenery <laughs> stay because you can't find your way out I know. um kind of like you though yeah right like yeah. small town um so i love hunting and fishing and and all the fun stuff so um so yeah been doing this since 2006 uh that's our team and uh just a a lot of we just try to stay up on what everybody's doing. Pretty involved, I think, in Keller Williams over the years. Um, have served on the ALC. I mean, I've never held the team leader position, uh, which is something I think that's Is that an opportunity you'd like to have at some um, point? No. <laughs> no. I think maybe it, it, maybe it was. I mean, I think I think a while ago I, I probably had considered it. But uh, I think the... The last several years, uh, you know, the, the John Davis regime, regime yeah. really turned and burned uh, team leaders out of what they're naturally good at. No, we're coming into kind of like second opportunity, like getting our wings at KW, and I'm just so excited to see what's, what's happening. It's going to be fun. So, yeah. It's going to be fun. So. So that's Eric. Um, for those of you that don't know who I am, I am the team leader here at Keller Williams Lake Minnetonka. Um, been in this role for about three and a half years. Prior to that, I had a team out of the Minneapolis Lakes office. I started in real estate in 2010 as an agent. Prior to that, I was an investor. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is kind of how I actually grew my business. I was not from here. I was from Wisconsin, came here, um, and I started door knocking because that was the only thing that I knew how to do. And I had little ones, right? Oh, and so, yeah, so I had, I just took them in the stroller. We went and door knocked and um, I built an entire database that way uh, was from door knocking and then the follow up and kind of taking one deal and making it multiple deals. So I think for a long time, and maybe you would agree or not agree, we, we kind of went away from that because things were too fast or um, business was just kind of rushing in versus us really having to to lead generate and and work a little bit harder on yeah making more deals yeah i think um you know the one thing that's really helped us is you know, the last few years is just finding simplicity and everything right i think we we get turned on to so many shiny objects and there's lead source this and yeah. you know we'll help you this way and actually where i found um the the biggest growth in our team is by by saying no right to yeah. so much stuff that clarity in in what you do comes from a process of elimination and a process of subtraction and not addition and so take anything away from this class take that right don't don't you know don't go build one street and then across street and then a cul-de-sac over here build your single street into a four-lane highway and, and just make that the biggest baddest street in the neighborhood should we start building a street 
Yeah, sure. So before we go, I was uh, like to ask, what, what do you guys like? You showed up here for a reason. Like, what do you? We're not going to sit this whole time. We're going to like. Oh, are we going to? Are we going to like? We're going to jump in next. We're, we're going to. All right. You and I are both yep. very. We're vocal. We're true. We're, like, use our hands a lot. So, what do you guys want to get out of this? Like, what did you show up here? How to uh, how to build a business by your first sale, I guess. Build a business by first sale, okay. Or from your first sale. That's kind of what the title of the uh, this Zoom is called. Yeah. Fair. What else? There's something in the chat. It was about audio. Oh, okay. On how to convert buyer transactions into more listings. More listings. Okay. How about the people in the room? What do you guys want to learn? This is just like a fun hour to hang out with Eric and I. That's we could I mean. sing. We could do, yeah. you know. We know that you're not good at that. Wait, I can't <laughs> sing, but we could definitely do the full choreography to yeah. push it. Yep. <laughs> is that it is that it is that what you guys want to learn that's it i think yeah like how is it mm -hmm. about how to get more deals from that one yeah. deal and, yeah. and is that with referrals and, and how is that done we are doing all the things right now and okay actually, so what i would say something there um so i'm here because like you just touched on there are so many avenues there's so much minutia that you really could drown in. And so it's finding your lane and um, taking it from there. Okay, so um, thank you all for, for sharing that. So all, all of these things um, boil back to really, to, to really one thing, right? And it's, it's the relationship that you have with a single person. Okay, that is a one to one relationship. Okay, so how many are in this room are less than two years? Okay, less than five? Who's been more than 10? Okay, I'm a lender though, so I don't, I don't. Sure, yeah. It does matter. It, it, same, same, <laughs> same applies, right? I mean, universal, universally applicable. Okay, so. Your your goal, right, is is, and I'm sure you've talked with new agents. Anybody like, where is everybody's database at, right? And the database is really there's this. There can be several tiers in the database. What I want to talk about is who are your closest, like call it 200, right? And can we get belly to belly with these folks, right? Can we actually have conversations enough to have true relationships with? Right, because how many people have two hundred people in their database? Okay. Okay, so quite so, a few in the room. So let me back that up. How many of those two hundred could you call and have a conversation with, and maybe go like pick up their kids, or you'd go actually have a drink with those people? Okay. All of them. Okay, that's good. Probably twenty-five. Okay, so now your database is at twenty-five. Okay. So start there then. What do you need to do to start creating relation, more relationships with more people, right? Because that's really where it all starts. It stems from one transaction. That's the deal dominant. But the relationships that you have and can create with those people that are, that are lasting will deliver far more because guess what? Each of those people, and we're just kind of rehashing all the old Keller Williams stuff, they also have this database. So your database of 200, who also has a database of 200, gives you an actual database of 40,000 people. Now, if I were to supplant a database of 40,000 people into your system, could you do the, the number of deals that you want on 40,000 people? Okay. So the deal domino really starts with, well, how, how do you influence your 200 to get to the next one? Okay. So and truly get into relationship with those two hundred people. Yeah, like true, like you know, if you're hey, I can only maybe call and have a real conversation with twenty five. How do I increase that with the other hundred and seventy five? Yep, and it's one call. 
right? Like keep keep doing that to get in a relationship with them. Yeah. Well, it's it, it's one call that leads to a second call. Like you don't get the opportunity to have the to jump right to the third call or the text message or the dinner or the drink without the first call. And so any call hesitation, you know, that, that phone does not weigh a, a million pounds, right? It, it just pick up and make the damn call. I love that you're doing this. Do you still use like a hand I phone? I do. Or like is, a, it, is, it, is, that, is, that, is that what happens way out, out there? Or what? I need to have a pathway. I need to start over. <laughs> So, okay, <laughs> let's, let's talk for a minute about business from the first sale. For the, buyers are great. Buyers are, are not going to be as systematic as listings are. So can we start with listings? Okay, so let's just take a listing, right? You've, you've talked to one of your 200. They say, um, Kami, come, come list my house. We're ready to make a move. You, you sign the documents. What do you do? After I sign the documents yeah. as a listing agent. Let's, let's talk about it. Well, first of all, I submit them so that Heather doesn't get mad at me. <laughs> That's going to be number one. That's going to be number one, right? Okay. Yep. Um, for the way that I used to actually do that, um, we had a whole list of what we went through, right? Perfect. So prior to it ever going on to the market, um, we would do what we called off-market uh, to agents in that neighborhood. Now it's called coming soon. But I would actually right. take to the top. Let's, let's back up for a second. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do at the appointment is we're going to say, hey. We're, oh, we're, we're still at the appointment? I thought we already signed yeah, it. We're we, gone. We've signed it. So we've signed it. Okay. We're, we're going to say, hey, this is so great. Out of curiosity, do you know of anybody else who might be thinking about making a move? Mm -hmm. It's the RAS theory, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you buy a blue car. Everyone else has a blue. It's for referral when you you're going to ask for a referral when you. Who select. does that? Let's, so, oh, so, but similar, right? Who so, online does that? So, how about this? Let's make a let's make a takedown list. Okay, you're we're we're, we're both writing. Right. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm going to talk. You're going to write. This is going to be like bo a back. very Bonnie and Clyde thing we have going on. All right. Okay. I feel like we should ask for a referral at the appointment. I know you're carrying and you have your six shooter, so. <laughs> the two S? Nope. One, two R's. Two R's. So, so at appointment, okay? Okay. That is step number one, okay? Eric's the only person that can tell me what to do, by the way. So, so <laughs> have any of you, have any of you heard the, the promise script from Mike, uh, Yeah. So the um, uh, so if you just type up t YouTube the promise script, okay. So a lot of the agents um, that I know that are ultra successful, they are they are creating the relationship and the expectation up front that when they deliver the level of service that the seller expects to see. The expectation is also that the seller then delivers them the name of someone by the time the transaction closes. This is a two-way street. We, we believe relationships are one of partnership, right? So Mike Hicks is his name. So Mike Hicks, the promise script. So this is something that our team has done. We, we have our nice little listing presentation. That's the last page in our listing presentation. <laughs> in the promise script, okay? There's no way that an agent in our team cannot have a promise script conversation because it is literally the last page in the presentation. The promise script says, hey, you know what? Can I, my promise to you is that we're gonna deliver a five-star customer experience based upon what you need. Now, because this relationship is one of partnership and because our business grows by referrals from great clients who we serve at the highest level. I'm going to ask you that sometime between now and the time of closing, that you provide me with one more name of somebody who has a real estate need. Maybe it's not to buy or sell immediately. Maybe they need something help, you know, fix on their house. But somebody who has a real estate need. 
So when I deliver at the highest level for you, can you promise me, right? We're using the downswing that you've that you'll give me that. Of course. Well, now here, here's I'm glad that you said that. But if I don't receive that, I'm gonna know that we didn't deliver on what we said we were going. Ooh. And I'm going to ask you where we can improve our systems. And is that okay? But if between now and the time of closing, if I don't get a referral from you? So let's talk about that. How okay. many deals did you close last year? 102. Did you get 102 referrals? We didn't. Okay. The ones that you didn't, did you get feedback? Um, we did. We So keep in mind, I'm a human and I'm always working yep. at improving my, my yep. our systems as well. Um, we did on some, we did not on others. Okay. Okay. And that's okay. The reason I ask that is because that's okay. That's okay. So, so, so we just took the, the first step in any listing. Did we have a chance at creating the second domino? We haven't even, we haven't put the house on the MLS yet. We haven't, like, no one even knows that the house is big for sale. And we could have, like, just kicked one down. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we will. You guys will all be doing this after. So, okay. So, so bake that into your system, right? Bake that into your conversations. Because, like, how many listings does this office take in a year? Ed, what was last year's? Almost um, seven hundred. Yeah, six seven hundred. Yeah. If every one of your agents asks for a referral at the appointment, can you? Can we agree? What that, if it was only fifty percent? Let's not if, even say it's one hundred percent. Okay. So what if? Okay, so let's just take this back for a second. If you're at a table and they're agreeing to list their biggest financial mm -hmm. asset with you, do you think they are in a moment of trust with you? Do you think they like what you have to say? Do you think that they are they have wholehearted belief that you're going to be the one to do the absolute best job for them in that moment? Why would they not provide a name of one of their 200 people one of their 200 friends who has also been considering. If it's half, that takes you to 900 listings instead. Mm -hmm. What does that do for your profit share in your office? What does that do for your bank accounts? Right? Okay. I'm excited. You're excited about I'm it. So I'm excited, excited about, about it. it. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. So ask for a referral from the appointment. Could that deliver a referral? Yep. Okay. So now we're. Oh, we're going to go with blue. You're, oh, you're oh, ready. You're doing it. Okay. So now we're, we've gotten the house prepped. Um, we're ready to go on the market, basically. How many of you are statistically 8% of agents are using the coming soon status in the MLS? Are you aware of that, the fact that it's only 8%? Okay. We, we make it mandatory that we go on. Uh, incoming soon for a minimum of five to seven days before this. Why? Okay. Well, we're going to get to that. Oh, okay. Okay. We make it mandatory because I don't want to, I don't want to have your house go on the market on a Friday and then somebody sees it maybe Saturday afternoon when they're scrolling and then maybe they get to a showing by Monday. We're just delaying pushing people through. I want to build momentum and turn the wheel because what happens in Minnesota? Do we have kids sports that take us away on weekends? We have cabins that Friday night we, we leave, right? So in the summertime, a lot of times we'll actually shift our listing dates from Friday to Monday to not interfere with cabin time for people. Ooh, that's strategic. So have you ever thought about that? Do you have an open house on a month? Like when do you have that first open if you have one then? Okay. <laughs> so, 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 so we're we're doing but we're we're doing a minimum of five to seven days. Okay. So let's just say for the sake of this for the sake of this example. You want me to put coming soon up here? Coming put coming soon. Okay. You're gonna write in blue five to seven days? Sure. <laughs> Okay, so now, during that 
coming soon phase. You have an opportunity, okay? If you list a home <laughs> in a neighborhood, what are you gonna do? You are going to print out a minimum of 100 flyers and you are going to talk to every door, every neighbor within a 100 home radius of that home. And you're going to invite them to come see the home at your open house. Is this a private open house just for the neighborhood? Nope, it's for everybody because I want the neighbors to see the traffic that I drive to the open house. Even if it's other neighbors. Okay. Okay. At Paul's last open house, he had 13 groups through the open house. All of them were neighbors. Do you think that all of those neighbors knew every other neighbor? Mm -hmm. Do you think they saw 13 people in a line of cars out the driveway that and said, holy shit, this guy knows what he's doing? Sorry, can I swear in here? I'm a little bit. You're fine. <laughs> Jeez, <I have> <laughs> My whole leadership team's like, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> it's okay. safe space. Great. So, a hundred flyers minimum in the neighborhood. You're going to invite them to the open house. Hey, you're also going to ask them this question. Hey, when the home sells, would you like to know what it's sold for? Okay. Great. I'll be happy to send that to you. What's your number? I'll be happy to call you with that info. What's your number? What did you just do? Captured their info. You captured their info. This database just grew. If you talk to five people, you now have five additional database ads. Can those people be put on market reports? Can those neighborhood people, nurture is na huge. Neighborhood nurtures, right? You automatically, by getting their, their, their phone number and their email, they just gave you the opportunity to touch them a minimum of 24 times a year without even touching them, let alone actually making the calls. Okay. So from my last open house, 13 okay. groups through, right? Yep. Probably didn't have their email or their yep. phone number. He says he has a list. But now he does, right? Well, so that's 13 new people. So look, is that is that a, an opportunity to be in a referral to have another deal? Okay. But the coming soon is giving you time to do this. The coming soon is giving us time to do this. This doesn't even factor into the account, the traffic that we're driving to the website that's creating online leads. Okay. So that's the next bullet. You have, you have a website just for. So this is, so let's, we have, okay. So can, hang on. Can we all agree that we have multiple columns of like, this is what I do personally. This is what is done for me online just by syndication mm -hmm. and things like that. This is what is done through like Facebook ads and, and all that, right? So let's just, uh, just for a second, let's take this back and say Facebook doesn't exist because we don't have a relationship with those people. There's no intent with Facebook. Facebook is voyeurism, okay? Mm -hmm. Facebook is what? Nothing. I just do. Uh, well, it, it is. So when I see an ad on Facebook, you're interrupting my Facebook search. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I Google real estate agents in Minnetonka, that is intent. We have to distinguish between voyeurism and intent when it comes to online lead generation. We just do. Yeah. So you can you can write on the side if you'd like Facebook ads. It has to be over here. You, where, wherever you'd like. This The whiteboard is your canvas. Okay. Okay. So we can write Facebook ads. Um, we're gonna have uh, Google, same, same Google. Yeah. We'll also reverse prospect. Do you like? Where is that at? That's on. That's on the MLS. Okay. Everyone has access to do that. That's pretty easy. Okay. People, but I, I think that there's agents that are better agents that don't necessarily do that all the time. Yeah. So for every listing that you have, you should also reverse prospect and mention the open house dates because what are these neighbors who walk through going to see when 15 people who 15 other groups who are represented they don't know that they're all represented when they come through your open are they going to say holy cow this guy drives some traffic mm -hmm. he's got a commanding presence mm -hmm. right 
Okay. So now, okay. House goes live. Oh, now we're live. Yep. Okay. House goes live. Okay. Do you think we should maybe do a like a, a Facebook Live or something like that or something just to show Is that what you do? The new the new, we yeah. We okay. and, and again, we do not, we are working on having one hundred percent um adherence to the process. We serve a very rural area, so sometimes some of these rural listings don't get door knocked. Um, oh, the other thing that we do, can I back up here? Yep. We also have an ISA. So our ISA calls, All this calls well. like a half mile radius around. <laughs> so some of you probably don't have the luxury of, or don't have Other teams in this category also send out yep. coming soon. They have a, yep. So this is inviting to open house, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing is mail coming soon. Yep. 100. Yep. Right? And we and we don't use the man, the direct mail function, but it is a, a phenomenal function and command because it's so it's easy. A, and it's an option because how many of us say, well, I'm not going to door knock? That's not, that's not a thing. Okay. So then you have the option to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And it's mail. Yep. The thing that, that this does not get you the, the mail is it doesn't get you their phone number or email because you're not belly to belly with them. I would rather have one belly to belly conversation where I get a call and or an email or a phone number and an email than mailing a hundred because again. But you could do this in the open house. Absolutely you could. Okay. If they show up. Yep. If they're not at the cabin that day. There's too many variables that exist when you mail that don't exist when you're at their front door, okay? Door knocking is not a, it, it is not a lost art, right? Real it's estate- It's actually really fun. Real estate, and, a, and grab somebody else and go do it. Each take 50 flyers, go spend two hours. If that's your lead gen for the day, if I can go spend my lead gen taking a walk in a neighborhood with a, a friend of mine and, and taking down names and numbers, that's the that's some of the best lead gen. If you have a child, it's actually really fun to do with a child as well because yeah. they're seeing you actually work. They're seeing work ethic. They're also seeing real conversations that are not on a cell phone. Yep. Uh, so if you're like, oh, I can't. I've got kids. I got small kids, or oh, I just don't have time. False. You absolutely do. Yep. Because I brought my kids with. Yep. All the time. Shiny example. Funny thing, my middle daughter learned how to door knock because she came with me last year, she door knocked 250 doors and got four babysitting jobs with the flyer that she made on her own. Still babysits to this day has been babysitting for those families for the last nine months. That's amazing. So it works. I have a question about door knocking because actually I'm a new agent. I'm starting it today. It's fine. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so in my neighborhood, 5,000 uh, 5, uh, 500 houses. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen in past year, only seven sold in that area. So is, does it make sense to start there or look for a better place for more houses sold in the neighborhood? It starts wherever your first step can be. Yeah. It doesn't It doesn't really matter. Because I would hear people on YouTube saying it yeah. must be 5-7% conversion. So it give you a better chance to... Well, okay. So statistically, 500 homes, right? They say, you know, one, 10% of people move every year. Let's just cut that in half. And do it but five percent but it's what's that 25 mm -hmm. statistically 25 homes in your neighborhood. seven what we have just seven okay but yeah. that's but that may be atypical because of rate environment or otherwise you don't create the relationship after the home is sold right you create the relationship before the home is sold so if you knew that likely in a, call it a, a balanced market, even call it whatever you want. If you knew, let's, okay, even if you cut that number in half, you're still at 12, right? That's 2%. That's extremely low for a neighborhood of 500 homes. Mm -hmm. So let's just say there were 15. What's the average value 
in your neighborhood in the neighborhood. 800, 900,000. 800K. Okay. So what's 3% of 800? 24. $24,000 commission times 15. What is that? Yeah. So there's, so basically you're knocking on the door of call it 400 thousand commission dollars in that neighborhood is it is that okay to, to go door knock if you knew you could potentially capitalize on even 200 or 100 thousand of it i'll go anyway i just want to hear your opinion about <laughs> we started right it's not about the listing or the sale it's about it's about person one person it's about one right? person and so what if that person maybe they're not selling there they personally aren't selling but what does that look like if they know someone else that's selling Yep. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so we do our Facebook Live. It's live. We're gonna do our Facebook Live. What day is that on? That's usually on either the day it goes live or right prior to the open house. So, okay. so how we schedule this is coming soon Friday, live the following Friday. Okay. So Friday. Yeah. Next Friday. You're a big ice cube fan. I am a big ice cube fan. Luda's <laughs> coming to the state fair, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so live the next Friday. So coming soon, we're going to get out. We're going to door knock any time between A to B. Okay? So the open house then is Saturday. Do we do anything else here or no? Do you? Um, We've done the reverse prospects. We're gonna oh, we're gonna go through and uh, comb our database to see where people are searching. And that's when it's live. Well, yeah, sometime in the coming soon. Okay. So if you have if the house is in call it if the house is in Minnetonka and you know that from running Facebook ads or whatever for the last you know two years you have twenty buyers who have been searching in Minnetonka, you can search geo search by location. And is it maybe a tag? If it someone came be, it, in as a tag. Could be it could be a tag. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Because then that gives you the opportunity, because you already have that those people's emails likely because they've registered on the site. That gives you the opportunity for 20 more conversations. Okay. And this is all before the house had hit the market. Now, um the thing that I didn't mention is your anytime this gets done, I don't want to use check marks for deals. I remember I asked you about a checklist and you're like, yeah. a checklist? What's a checklist? Yeah. You're checking all over the place. Yeah, here. cool it. <laughs> yeah. so, so guess what? You you went out and you door knocked 100 homes. Okay. Are you going to text your seller? Hey, just want to let you know, I just door knocked the neighborhood. You might hear from some of the neighbors that they're Hey. Just want to let you know, we just had our ISA call within a half mile radius of the house. She called, she made 250 dials and talked to 27 people in your neighborhood about your home. Okay. Hey, we just sent out your home to a list of 130 agents who have a buyer set up on a search that your home matches the criteria. Are you, can, is it, can you shoot texts for all those little things that you did? Because a lot of times what's happening, we list a home and then you choose a live date and then the seller goes, I guess they're going to do their thing and they trust you. We don't have to bombard them with information, but we can let them know exactly what we've done. Because when they talk to their friend who didn't have a great listing experience, they can say, well, did your, did your agent door knock or, or have their ISA call or do this or do that? I don't and by the way, did. if you don't have an ISA, you call. Or, or you call. Right. Yeah. So like that, like either way you call. Yeah. And if, if so, like, you know, I think yeah. someone said, Hey, for my first deal, how do I get this? Unless you have a, a full-time job somewhere else. Yeah. This is what you're doing. Every this, You're doing something every day for this listing. Yeah. And I like Heather, what does it cost to print a hundred flyers here? Um, 23 cents a buyer. No, it's, well, it's 13 cents. 
per uh, for a color copy. Thirteen cents for a color copy. Yeah. Okay. You know what's really? So if you had a flyer, but if you had a flyer or a postcard, it could be four or two on each page. So what I've always done sure. is it's always a four, right? Yeah. So it's a postcard. Sure. So it's four to every page. Sure. Okay. So let's just say you did that. What did this actually cost you? Two, two dollars, three dollars, mm -hmm. three bucks, right? So you couldn't have a half a copy at Starbucks that day. Okay. Are investing three dollars in your business is that okay? Facebook ads. Could you put twenty dollars on a Facebook ad for everybody in that in that same neighborhood to see your face? Now they've seen your face door knocking. They've seen your face potentially through the mail. They've seen your face on Facebook, right? They haven't gotten the reverse prospect because that's obviously through the MLS unless they're on a search for their neighborhood, right? But this part, when you door knock, put them on an immediate. Neighborhood nurture. Yep, immediate. Because then they're going to see the home that you're talking about pop into their neighborhood nurture. Okay. Man, we we have we're like barely even scratching I know. day number like, what two. Time is um okay, so we're gonna do the open house. Okay. You're gonna put out as many signs as you have. It's recommended to do 50 to 100. We just don't do that, right? How many do you do? We do six to eight. Okay, we're, we're welcoming everybody into the open house. My, um, if I was really, really trying, I would make everybody register at the door. I would say, hey, you know, our sellers ask that we just have a record of everybody who came through the house. Blame it on your sellers. It's not you asking for it, right? Hey, our sellers ask that we have a record of everybody coming through the open house. Would you mind just signing in for me so we know? Now, sometimes I do that. I'm a little bit more flippant about my open houses, just simply for the fact of, I want to talk to people who want to talk to me, right? I'm not going to make you, you need to register or you're not walking through this door. You That's also not are a great, in a very different space of your business. A thousand percent. Where agree. when he's having those conversations, he has no problem asking him for this. Yep. So if you don't feel comfortable doing that, this is a great option because yeah. now it's like, oh, I'm probably not going to ask them because let's be fair. How many agents in here, they'll be talking, they'll be talking like, you know, it's a three bedroom, two bath. Let me know if you have any questions. And then they're about to leave. And you're like, well, I can't, I can't ask so, them for their information now. So the first question that I always ask people is, are you out snooping today or are you out shopping? Both. Both. Cool. You live in the neighborhood? No. Where do you live? On Alaska. On Alaska. Job transfer then, huh? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Where do you work? Um, Keller Williams. Keller Williams. That's a great company. <laughs> That's a great company. Are, do you have a reload package or have you been looking for loans? Uh, no, we're just moving up here. I don't know. It's probably been about three months. About three months. Cool. Yeah. And I'm assuming you're coming to the open house without your agent because you're not currently represented? Uh, no, I am not. You're not? Oh, cool. Yeah. If there was a cool tool that we had that would give you instant agent level access to the homes that you've been looking at, would that something you'd be interested in? Like Zillow? Well, no, this is an agent level access. So this is all the stuff that the professionals see. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I would be interested. Cool. Let's do this. I don't want to bother you. I want you to have some time. Why don't you uh, write your name and email and phone down? Yeah. And I'll give you a call after the deal. Okay. Cool. Nice, nice to chat with you. Right? Like it doesn't have to be an imposing conversation. People want to be talked to to people, right? They don't want to be sold something they want to buy something. And so, those are fair conversations, right? Those are fair questions to ask as someone is coming into your seller's home. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay. So now open house Saturday, six eight signs, sign in. We've done the door knocking. People are coming through. Sometimes it gets a little bit crazy. We're trying to capture as many names and uh, as much info as we can. Um, this is this is exactly the prime example of what happened to us. Um, it's happened two or three times in the last two weeks. Um, open house came. Somebody came late to the open house. Um, Alyssa sold them a, another place this week. Okay. okay. On our team. So okay. open house. Some people don't like to do them. Some people think they're an inconvenience and people don't show up there. I can tell you that is absolutely false. Okay? 
people don't show up to open houses that you don't do this on. When you do the system, people show up to the open houses because they know about them. When open houses help happen on a Saturday, and people have not planned their day because they have kids events and, or they're going to the cabin or whatever, it's an inconvenience to them. We better be very clear on that too. Um, agents don't put their open house on the MLS or anywhere else too late sometimes, right? So if the open yep. house is on a Saturday, do not put that anywhere starting on the Thursday before. Yeah. You're, en you're be entering so far ahead. You're entering the open house. So what we've done, um, we have a anytime we take a listing, we have a, uh, a Google sheet that gets filled out, or excuse me, a Google form that gets filled out that gets emailed directly to our transaction coordinator that says when is the open house date, and she puts it in the MLS. Okay. So as soon as it's coming soon, people can see that there's an open house. Okay. So at the open house, we're having as many conversations, obviously capturing as much as we can. Um, in an ideal world, we're driving as, as much traffic through day one and day two as possible. Okay. okay. The thing that the coming soon does is if the average, if the average, what did the developer say last? So 17 days in the newest pending list. If you have 17 days, you just shorten your seller's time on market by a week. Does that look good for your stats? Does that look good in the eyes of the seller that they don't have to have their home open, you know, ready for showings for another week? Everything that you've done thus far is gaining additional traction and gaining additional trust and recommendation from the seller when you do exactly the things that you told them you were going to do. Okay. Now, let's just say we get an offer. Okay. Sorry. I keep on... Taking your red space with yeah, I was like, so is this offer? Let's just say offer. Okay. Okay. And let's just say you come to terms with that offer. Sellers are super happy. Okay. So they're smiling. They're very <laughs> smiling. Okay. Oh, by the way, let's just say your open house. So let's talk. So this is day two. So days on market is. Two, two, right? Yeah. So two, two, maybe three. If if you if your offer doesn't get accepted until Sunday, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So at the open house, let's just say you you've captured one of the neighbors and a potential new buyer. Okay. Out of that, is that dare we say two check marks? That is two check marks. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So now. Offer is accepted. Are the sellers happy that it's been on the market for two days and the offer was accepted? And can we talk about probably not a ton of showings, but it at least eliminates them because you push them to the open house. Yep. So now it's freed up their time in their home Bingo. during that during that time frame, Bingo. right? Yep. So it's like, okay, you've got all the people that were interested came in here. Okay. Right? Yep. Is that fair? Yep. If you're really happy with how I performed thus far, do you think it may be time to remind you? Ask about the promise. About that promise. Yep. Script. Okay. Out of curiosity, who might you know that could benefit from our system in having this run the way that it was run? That might be looking at making a move in the next three to six months. That asks number two. That's asked okay. number two. Okay, so is there a, a high likelihood that if they're happy as hell, they're going to give you another check mark? What if they already gave you a referral up here? Out of curiosity, do you know of anyone else? Why would why would you not ask again? I just they've given you one. Question, yeah, right? very. Yeah, no. I mean, other than the Johnsons, no, we don't. Perfect. In the meantime. Me now in closing, just keep, keep, it, in mind. keep it in mind if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, how many, how many potential did we create without even? Well, mm -hmm. Also, you know, you could do another Facebook post sold in two days above ask price, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you can write that in on the very bottom.
Can I ask a question? You may. How many um, like really busy agents uh, that have a lot of lists, let's say, are still probably going through this process or would maybe be willing this to let the, you? This is the opportunity. That's, yeah, yeah I'm glad you asked that question. So how many agents do you know in this neighborhood that make that take more than they're probably doing 35 to 45 transactions a year, maybe a small team. How many agents don't aren't doing all of this stuff? Well, I'm going to tell you because I asked agents from all four of our market centers to stand up here and be on a panel. And we have exactly one agent that's on this panel. You want to know why? Because the top producing agents from every single one of our market centers are like, ooh, it's just not a well-oiled machine yet. Sure. They have, they have systems in place, but everyone is working on better systems, right? Including us. In, in, all the time, right? There's there's probably times where you're like, oh, we missed this. Oh, we didn't have time yeah. for this. Or something happened. Start with small. Or like you're saying, go ask a team and be like, hey, do you ever need help with any of this? Any of this? Do you do yeah. something like this? You yeah. door knock for your listings. Okay. I can guarantee they would say, go for it. Well, I would preface that by saying, don't do step one if you can't or can't or are unwilling to do steps two, three, and four. Okay. If you're not willing to do the open house, don't door knock the neighborhood. Find an open house that you're willing to do, right? And go all in. Because now those neighbors have seen us, right? And and they've seen our face probably multiple times through this. They've come to the open house. They've met us and probably had additional conversations, right? What's the, what's the market like? Well, you, you see the 13 people in this open house, right? We need more. Um, they're going to see that the offer has been accepted because once they see it, they, they all have access to Zillow and Realtor.com, right? They're going to see that it's sold. They'll probably see the Facebook ad. Now, guess what? 30 days later, okay? 30 days later. Are we fine? Yep. <laughs> Property's closed. Okay. What are we going to do? We're going to take 100 flyers and we're going to door knock that exact same neighborhood. The flyers are going to say, Sold, and now you can tell them what it's sold for. Well, the time that it's sold in. And it's going to have your face and all your info on it so that they can stick it in a drawer. <laughs> because they're going to know what it is when, when there's time to, when it's time to go. Okay. You're also going to call and email the specific people that you already talked to if they don't answer the phone. Now you get a, a hundred people, a hundred doors. Let's just say you get 15 people that actually open the door, 10 that give you their info. If 10% of people sell every year, what's a one in 10? That's a deal. Check mark. What else are we going to do at the closing? Some people take a nice picture and then they put picture. It. You can post it. Not of the home, of the people. Of the people. And the story. Because it's not about you, it's about them. Okay. Now. How happy are you on closing day if you just made 15 grand than you were more than you were asking? What if it was an expired listing? Like we just did this. Yeah. We had a property that was on the market for three months. They had like four showings. We just listed it. We had 35 showings, I think, in three days, multiple people through the open house. These people cannot believe it, right? Yeah, so we have to we, have to, we, we did we, it here. We, yeah, we, we should still we, do it here. We should, so again. we should and can duplicate it. Can we ask for that referral one more time? Okay. 
Okay. I like your check marks. Thanks. <laughs> how many how many pieces of business did we create off of this one to one relationship? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that a deal domino? Would you think that's far fetched that those seven connections, right? Because I think people are like, oh, I can't do that. How many? Oh, times? that's not real. How the many? way that he explained this, does that seem very doable? Yeah. Is it simple? It, it's simple. pretty simple. Did I did I at one point say, oh, I need to go buy a system from somebody that I saw at Family Reunion? Nope. Did I say, oh, I need to subscribe to this? Nope. How much money did I actually spend here? If you remove the the Mail, I, six dollars. I spent about six bucks doing it. Can I ask you guys a real question? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to answer for them. Sure not. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> does this make door knocking seem a lot easier and a lot more advantageous to you? Because I run a lot of accountability groups, and it's I'm going to go door knock. 30 doors and it doesn't happen. I'm going to go door knock 100 doors. It doesn't happen. When you see this, is it like, I mean, what is what is 200 doors? If you live where you live, that might take like eight hours. If you live where I live, that takes about two hours. <laughs> yeah. um, but let's just say the, the commission on that particular home was $10,000. Is that worth 200 doors knocked and an open house? And whatever the follow-up time is for a ten thousand dollar commission. Yeah. Why are we doing it? Stop talking, Eric. You are. But what if the, that's the problem though? Is we we get so busy doing shit. Like, what if you made this your busy? And that's how I get. That is your job. This no, is not. your job. Like this is your job. This is what you. This is where I get heated. It's like I'm busy. This is this is your job, right? Putting this on the MLS is not your job. They can pay MLS online seven hundred fifty dollars to do that. This is your job. If you don't like this, get a new job. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, like the, we're we're always busy, but we're busy with the wrong stuff. Like, come everybody can, when you're before you leave, take a picture of this, and you have a system for your listing going live that is duplicatable, systematic, that is easy, and that is repeatable. And to be fair, if you don't like these things, right, then you go and you you call. I don't like door knocking. Great, call. If you're gonna call, I call two hundred. Because it's faster, has right? There, has there ever been any any time in in your career where you've said, "Oh, I don't like doing that, so I'm not going to do it," and it's minimized the impact that you've had? Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't like doing it, part of me says, "Tough shit. Just go do it and buck up and and deal with it." Jay Holby. That's the job. That's, That's what you job. send up for. Like you don't get the ten thousand dollar commission check without wading through some of the crap to get there. So does this thing include in your listing package? Like, are you gonna show the seller? That's yeah, we have, yeah, it's, it, this is a lot more verbose than, than our listing package okay. shows, but it shows a lot of the same stuff. But this would be great, but if you put it in your listing packet, you have to do it, yep. right? So. You know, a lot of times you'll just put it as we're going to door knock the neighborhood. We're going to, but if you put this exactly in there, what do you, if someone showed me that, I'd be like, wow. Yeah. Nobody else showed me that they're going to door knock 100 doors or so, 200 doors and then do this and do this on so, week one. And like, to your point, seven homes have sold in that neighborhood. How many of those, how many of those homes that were sold did you get a, a flyer on your door? I oh, didn't get any yet. I'm just starting today. No, I'm saying. No, like you the, personally, did one of those agents fly oh, in your neighborhood? The funny part that I moved from Louisiana recently, and uh, ah. I just moved in that neighborhood. I know. I'm not okay. That makes sense. 
So to be fair to that question, there are agents that work a lot in my neighborhood. The only way I get flyers is through the mail. Yeah. I have never once, not once, had a real estate agent come and knock on my door, including the fact that my neighbor's house is now live. Don't ask a question why I don't have it. We didn't get along. Not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't even ask why. But I didn't, right? It's one where no, no agent has ever knocked on my door. Never left a flyer on my door. It's always via mail. Okay. So there's, there's one really important piece here that I would urge you guys to uh, start doing if you haven't already done it, and that is reviews. If you are not collecting five-star Google reviews. Oh, where do we do that? Is that at the closing table? This is every time you're going to ask for a referral. So we, so in, in our system personally, so we have made it so like our transaction coordinator has a process, right? How many people, when they open an email that's like this long with process, how, how many people read it? Like really read it? What is the population of C's or? You're an agent, you don't read any emails. Yeah, that's correct. But but a homeowner, yeah, it's, it's still probably 25, 30%, right? Yeah. So I baked videos. I made videos in BombBomb Bomb and we embedded them into the emails that we send where somebody can click on it and hear it. People will learn auditor, their auditor through their auditory system far faster than they'll learn visually by reading. And it'll stick with them, right? So I'd encourage you all to use video if you're not. Um, but you're gonna be asking for a review at multiple points throughout the process, right? And even in my listing presentation, my goal is to create a five-star customer experience. Why did we, why do I say five-star and say, a 10 out of 10. Because when you go to a rating system online, they don't use 10 out of 10. They use one through five stars. Use a system that is compatible with what people are seeing elsewhere. Because those synapses will connect. And if you say, hey, I need a five star customer review from you. Like I don't tell people, hey, please log on and leave a review. I say, we want to be sure we did the best job for you. Please log on and leave a five-star customer review so we know how we did and we can share those results with the other people we come into contact with. And when you hear that multiple times and then you go onto the review, you're like, oh, five stars. That's it. So we have it, like it's it's all it's automatic. So we're in a really our team is in a really sweet spot right now. And reviews are not something that come supernaturally. Like if, if an agent on my team doesn't get a review, I call the seller and ask how they did. So Ooh, Jenny, she's still on. <laughs> Jenny, this has happened, and and they said, "Oh yeah, we'll do it right away." She has, she was fantastic. Yeah, I and remember, Eric, I even got the one star, and we got a referral from it last week. <laughs> oh yeah, Jenny got a one star review. The lady was a peach. Uh, a peach. <laughs> had her house. She's she's it was real estate agents. Nobody needs a real estate agent. He's got you know. We can do this on our own. Well, the, the fact of the matter is she did try to do it on her own and she didn't sell it. And then she hired a, uh, some flat fee brokerage, whatever, and didn't sell it. And then she hired us and guess what happened to the home? Jenny? Oh, well, yes. Yes. So you might not need us, but guess what? You hired us to do a job and we did it. So the, the funny thing is, is you can have one bad experience with somebody and they can leave a negative review. And they probably will can't get offended by it and actually i've had people reach out to me and say hey you have a ton of great reviews i looked at your negative reviews and the way that you responded to those i'm going to send my people to you so just respond with class to the negative ones or don't respond at all we are at time okay so um, we, we got so through anyway, this part we have 275 five-star google reviews we're in a sweet spot right now between uh, Stretch Armstrong and uh, some of the like, single, single agents. So like build that review process, bake that review process right in. If you're going to go to one, I would go to Google over Facebook or, or any other medium. So any questions? And I'll, I, stick, I'll stick around. For you know what I really liked was you're texting the seller what you were doing from that process of that coming soon. 
I love that. I it's love a pretty simple process. Yeah. And, and I, nothing in here was complicated. Did, did this feel complicated to anybody? Was this helpful? That was helpful. <laughs> Say, um, Eric, could you take a picture of that? That, and then I'll send you an email and you can send me a copy of the picture. Is that possible? Or someone else take a picture? Yeah, there you go. Zoom yeah, we, a little bit better. Oh, that's good. Hang on one second. Let me uh, get right out of there. <laughs> I'm getting my phone. Let me grab that. Hang on. I'll check. I think it might be okay. Let me look here. Hang on. Perfect. Thanks. Nice job. <laughs> no, this was really helpful. I really appreciate the information. Yep. And this is this is just on one listing. I would take this and I would just I would write side by side. I would write it out and then look on the buy side and say what is the what is the equal point in the spot the equal spot in the process where we're representing a buyer. Like how can we how can we flip this? Can we door knock for a buyer? Right. Yes. So we've done this. So we have a so like in our listing uh, packets, we have a listing menu of services where we have three different packages they can choose from. I actually just because of all the ruling stuff, I reverse engineered this. So now people can choose for me to represent them on the buy side with three different packages. So what does that look like? Let's go through this really quick if you if you have time, right? So same thing. You'd ask for the referral to buyer consultation, which is before yep. you show any homes, right? So during this coming soon. You can be doing this, mm -hmm. but door knocking neighborhoods in the neighborhood they're looking for, yep. right? Yep. This portion. Sending them the open houses for the weekend. Sending them the open houses, right? You're going to give them. You're going to give them a stack of cards that they can use as an open house guest pass, right? So then, if the agent has questions, they can call you. This portion, you're doing. Yep. You're you're doing the offer, right? Yep. Um, same things you can still do do here in regards to communication, yep. asking for the promise. You're closed. You can do this same thing with permission, door knocking the neighborhood yep. that they actually the, got a house in while putting a happy home buyer sign in their yard. Yep. So the other cool thing is um, a lot of people will do a uh, like a housewarming party for people. Yep. They'll door knock the neighborhood and uh, have a come, introduction to this come new meet neighbor. your new neighbor. A half hour, an hour before the housewarming actually starts. So you can do the same thing. It's just yep. a different type of marketing. Yep. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, Eric. So I'm I'm pretty much an open book uh, when it comes to all this stuff. So uh, Eric P at kw dot E R I C K P at kw dot. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.